Okay, folks, thank you for coming today. I really appreciate that. I'm, I was just thinking you know, of a connection with Rob's, the Crusaders, you know, and my study was based in Christchurch, where the rugby team is the Crusaders. So there you go, Rob. So my talk is really about family and family life, and all of us have some kind of connection, I think, with families, and because in many ways they're the building block of our society, so they're important to us. So my research stemmed from my own experience as a first-time parent and the challenges and the joys it brings. And I particularly looked at the, the challenge of leisure when you become a first-time parent. And this is an original research study because previous studies have tended to look at, you know, across the life cycle where I just looked at that 27-month period between getting pregnant and the first two years of birth. So in order to collect information for the study, I used focus groups and interviews. And as you can see, the study was based in Christchurch uh, with uh, your typical family. And Christchurch, if you don't know, is in New Zealand off that small island of Australia. So I obviously focus on heterosexual couples, but I do realize that there's many other types of family. So in terms of my findings, this diagram, although it looks complicated, it's not, it's very simple. If you look on the left-hand column, you'll see that this is the transition period here. Sorry. This is the transition period here, from pregnancy through to the first two years of parenting. And this is the significant life event. And this is uh, females, and this is males. And you can see as the journey towards parenthood nears, all forms of leisure decrease in terms of time and quantity. But on a happy note, they tend to improve post-birth. And it's the same exactly with the males. And obviously, there's certain constraints that operate upon that leisure. And these are the constraints. And you can see, particularly for women, uh, gender expectations is a major constraint. But particularly for men, once post-birth comes, work-life balance is a major constraint. And I won't go uh, through each of those. So basically, what that model shows is the extent to which constraints impacted upon uh, the heterosexual couples, the type and quantity of leisure engaged in for both males and females, and the type of leisure engaged in pre and post uh, birth. So the key finding really was in many ways, family life is experienced through transition period, but leisure is both restricted and in many ways is facilitated. So what did this, or why is this research important? Well, it's important for many different reasons because out of the research came a number of recommendations to hopefully improve uh, leisure for parents pre and post birth. Uh, particularly, that leisure providers should think about providing more family friendly opportunities. So, so I'm talking about more staff orientation towards families, more information for families, more promotion to families, more publicity to families, and more appropriate family uh, uh, leisure facilities. So I would also argue, because of what came out of the research, for specific provision for families. So providing for the basic needs of families, like decent car parks, maybe a creche, you know, affordable transport options. Could you can imagine you know, visiting a leisure centre on public transport with three kids around your ankles? It's not an easy experience. And obviously, uh, out of the research came many recommendations for mums and dads uh, classes, maybe on their own or with the children. Also, open days for parents, maybe a family leisure pass to make it more affordable, because one of the key constraints was affordability. Mums and baby classes, but why not dads and baby classes? And maybe together, as a whole, family-based activities. So that was really some of the basic uh, recommendations that came out of the research. But secondly, there are obviously research priorities. Obviously, this study took place in New Zealand. I would like to replicate that in Australia. Also, I would like to, in the next study, use diary methods. And also involve extended family members, like grandparents who are significant look at the impact of different forms of leisure and work patterns, expand the geographical boundaries of the study, and maybe repeat the study with parents with older children, because in my research, children weren't given a voice because they were too young. But with older children, they would be given a voice. So basically, this study explored family life and leisure 
and contributes to the literature on family life and family leisure. Thank you very much.